Okay, so let's, let's begin. Um, first presenter is Alberto Simeone. Alberto is from the European, uh, from CEN, which is the European Standardization Body, and he'll be talking about how the e-cigarette industry will set standards using European Technical Committee 437. So, Alberto, I will... Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, first, I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present uh, what we do. So, uh, I work in the Innovation Department at uh, St. Senelik. St. Senelik are two problem with it, to scroll it down. Maybe we can use this. Since so, so like our two private uh, distinct non-profit organization in uh, Brussels, uh, they merged several years ago the staff, so I serve both of them. And uh, our members are the national standard bodies from 33 European countries. There is also a third uh, European uh, body for standardization. It is ETC. It's about communication, uh, telecommunications. And uh, we form the three <coughs> officially recognized uh, standard bodies uh, in uh, Europe. So there is a, a specific regulation on standardization that recognizes our role. We, uh, as you can see from uh, this map, uh, the 33 are the 28 from the European Union, plus the three from EFTA, so Norway, Iceland, uh, Switzerland, plus Turkey and the former Yugoslavian uh, Republic of uh, Macedonia. Maybe you are familiar with one of these symbols. These are, are our national standard bodies, so they are uh, they provide the technical expertise for our work. Uh, so these are the body that you should be in contact with if you are interested in standardization. Of course, these are 33 uh, national standard bodies commit themselves to uh, develop European standards according to a consensus-driven process, uh, and then to adopt the European standard at the national level once the standard is ready, also by uh, withdrawing the conflicting national standards, if any. So it means that uh, we will have one European standards for the same, identical, for 33 countries. Uh, there is also an international dimension for standardization. Uh, we have uh, agreement with ISO, and I think that you are familiar with that for the famous ISO standard 9001 and many others, and also for the IEC with the Senelec. Uh, these uh, these agreements uh, are uh, the goal is to avoid duplications in technical work. So if there is uh, uh, a project that has an interest at international level, then we will uh, uh, work on this internationally. Otherwise, first uh, we can work on this uh, in Europe, and then we can broad the topic uh, to the international stage. So this is just to give an idea of what we do. So SEN is the uh, European standard body that develops standard in any field except uh, the electrotechnical one, where there is a Senelec, and the telecommunication one, where there is Etsy. So uh, we, we produce standard for services, materials, transport, healthcare, food, and now also e-cigarettes. This is just to give you an idea how the portfolio is, uh, is uh, split amongst the sectors. The most important sectors in terms of standard is, uh, in terms of number of standards, is uh, uh, transport from a historical point of view. The services uh, is one of uh, sectors with less standard, but it is growing steadily. Uh, we have a portfolio of 19,000 standards. We produce 1,500 standards per year. It means around 120, 130 standards per month. And uh, our staff is only of 85 people. So it means that we have a process that, uh, uh, thanks to the cooperation of the national standard bodies, uh, let us produce this kind of number. Briefly, definition of standard, because uh, it's, it's, it's not always a very 
clear known concept. So standards is a document that prescribes technical requirements for product, process, service, adopted by recognized standardization body for repeated and continuous <coughs> application with which compliance is not compulsory. In bold, the main words, so standards are about technical, technical requirements. So there is no, in standards you will not find uh, social issues, you will not find uh, historical uh, uh, topics, but it's all about technical requirements for products, service, process, um, and system. And the main characteristic of standards is that uh, they are voluntary. Of course, we are private uh, organizations, so we don't uh, produce laws, we don't produce regulation. We produce voluntary standards. Sometimes, because of the reference of the standards in the law, then standards can achieve a higher level uh, binding uh, 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 force. And standards are, uh, can be called standards only those documents adopted by recognized bodies. Because uh, we, as a SANSEL, as European standards, we have in place process and procedures that assure that the standards follow a transparent, open process, and uh, therefore there is a consensus-driven process that takes into account the needs of all the stakeholders. So, therefore, when we speak about international standard, uh, we mean a standard adopted by international organization, the one you saw before, European standard, only the standard we produce, Sansanic Etsy, of course, and national standards, the standards are produced by our national members. I'd like to give also an informal definition of standard is the best technical reference document on which stakeholders can agree. So we can standardize on everything if there are stakeholders that need the standard and if they can agree on the content of the standard. So benefits. In this first uh, slide I put uh, the three most relevant for this, uh, uh, for this event. Standards help companies to self-regulate their business and comply with European and national legislation, improve the quality and safety of products and services, increase confidence of consumers and social communities in products and services. Other benefits, uh, they also enhance the accessibility of elderly people or people with disabilities, improve the safety of workers, promote environmental safety and sustainability, maybe also the environmental safety can have some aspect related to this to the cigarette business, increase effectiveness, efficiency, and allow company to save money. So how does it work in the process? This is very important because uh, things uh, will, uh, we are, are moving fastly. From the 22nd of June, we will have the first of meeting of the technical committee on e-cigarette. So how does it work? Once that the, the European technical committee, what you can see, that you can read, that CENTC is established, then, at the national level, in the national standard bodies, some national mirror committees are created. The national mirror committees is the place where all the national stakeholders gather together, they agree on a national position, they nominate some delegates, delegates that go to the European Technical Committee in order to present and discuss with the other uh, delegates from the other uh, European standard, uh, national standard bodies, uh, to discuss about uh, the content of the standard. And then, of course, they have to report back to the uh, National Mirror Committee what are the outcomes of the meetings. So the technical committee is the big circle uh, in, uh, in the middle. It's where the deci decisions are taken. And so this is where the, you, the national delegates go and discuss and decide and they vote. But for writing the standards, Working groups are created. As many working groups, as many different topics are needed. So uh, it means that uh, for the CNPC on electronic cigarettes, maybe several working groups would be created. I, I, I say maybe because uh, since the kickoff meeting is on the 22nd of June, I cannot give anything for granted. So everything will be discussed. We are really in the, in the, at the right moment. Uh, so the process, now we are in the stage one, so we have just had a proposal. Then in the working groups, they will, uh, uh, you will write the standard. 
And then once the working groups produce the document, the document will be approved by the technical committee, so the same TC 437, and this draft will be submitted for the public inquiry. It means that everybody, even those that uh, have not uh, worked in the, in the document, in the, in the working group on the document, uh, will have access to this uh, draft standard and will, uh, they will be able to comment on it. So the comment will be considered in the technical committee and then finally the final text will be submitted for the formal vote. Once the formal vote is, uh, if, if it will be positive, of course there is always, uh, uh, the technical committee must always try to get the unanimity of stakeholders. If it is not possible, consensus uh, is given by the number of 71% of positive vote, uh, votes cast. And then, the, and then uh, hopefully, stage six publication. So we will have a new EN with a number. And this will be adopted nationally by three months or six months, it depends on the specific cases, by the national standard bodies. And so it will become, for instance, the DIN EN the number in Germany, the NF EN uh, in France, UN EN in Italy, but it's always the same identical standard. So, Senti C for three seven. Uh, since uh, in, the, in, the, in the recent years, as you know well, better than me, there was a boom in this uh, business. So, the, um, a need raised by the companies on uh, uh, to enhance the safety requirements of these uh, uh, products. The same need uh, was felt by the uh, European institutions. So in the new product, of, uh, in, in the new tobacco product directive, there is a reference uh, on the uh, on cigarettes. They are covered. Uh, so the reference, uh, and so in, in the Article 20, there is a clear mention of technical standards for the refill mechanism. So there is already in the legislature the idea to uh, delegate the European standard body to provide technical standards in this field in order to help legislators to regulate this uh, market. And so this brought the, uh, the stakeholders, and uh, a particular thanks uh, go to uh, ICITA in UK, that uh, via PSI and FIVAPE in France, via FNOR, they were the, uh, uh, the promoters of the setup of this uh, SEM uh, technical committee. This SEM technical committee was approved in January 2015, so we have officially the CENTIC 437. The scope is the standardization of the field of electronic cigarettes and related e liquids. The secretariat is uh, for AFNOR, the French standard bodies. And the kickoff meeting is the uh, 22nd of June. It means that uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, meeting, uh, a chair will be appointed and the business plan will be approved. Business plan approved means also the work program will be approved. So it means that then the work will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will start and we hope that everything will go fast. They will go fast if there will be consensus amongst all the stakeholders on the, on the content of the standards. At the moment, the proposed work program, please uh, uh, consider this absolutely provisional uh, because uh, uh, it has been approved on the 22nd of June. Will be about the safety requirements on electronic cigarettes uh, to address mechanical, thermal, electrical, and chemical hazards. Safety requirements for the e liquids components, including nicotine and formaldehyde, and their thresholds, blacklist the components, heavy metals, etc. And also analytical methods on the emission. The stakeholders that are identified are the following ones, so public industry and companies, the organizations and trade unions, tobacco companies, users, consumers, harm reduction professionals, research institutes and scientists, test laboratories, EU institutional representatives of governmental and public authorities. So if uh, you uh, are, if you fall under uh, these categories and you uh, want to participate, if you want to contribute on this topic, uh, go to your national standard body, 
So here there is a, uh, the list. Uh, if there is a national interest, there will be for sure a national year committee, so you can ask to participate in a national year committee, and so you can bring uh, your uh, needs and views and uh, your uh, knowledge in the, in the national technical committee. So I think that I am perfectly on time. Thank you very much. And I'm available for any questions.